There is what they call the up Nepal generation. And those who have, uh, if you have been born in the last 45 years or more, you might fall within that bracket. Those of you who have never experienced in a normal Nigerian situation, I'm not talking about those who live in some communities who are relying on uh, off-grid power supply. I'm talking of those who live in a normal, medium, uh, lower-class society in Nigeria. If you're born in the last 45 years or so, you probably be part of the up Nepal generation. What is the up Nepal generation? Well, Nepal is the acronym for the uh, state-owned power uh, company, which eventually when it was privatized and broken down, and the discos and jenkos and all what have you, let me not bore you. So those who were born in the last 45 years, you may not have been experienced or ever experienced a situation where you have slept for one week without interruption of power. Uh, did I say one week? I mean, one day, 24 hours, and not experience interruption of power supply. And maybe you've traveled to Egypt, Ghana, South Africa. You would have seen how relatively stable their power uh, consumption is in that country. So you ask yourself, what is the problem with Nigeria that we cannot even have two days of uninterrupted power supply. If you are in Abia State, in some part of Abia recently, they've started enjoying uninterrupted power supply. I say congratulations to you. What about the rest of Nigeria, where this consistent power interruption has gone on? So the transmission company of Nigeria has come out to say, it has successfully restored the national power grid following the collapse uh, on Thursday. And these, we understand, is one of the 46 times that the power grid has collapsed um, from 2017 to 2023. Uh, the International Energy Agency's uh, report has uh, uh, told us that that's what has happened. And in fact, under the President Muhammad Buhari, 80 years, the power grid collapsed 98 times. Between 2017 and 2023, 46 times. 2022 alone, eight times. 2020, uh, 2022, eight times. 2023, three times. That is the menace that we have experienced as a people. So when we say power grid collapse, the national power grid, that is, it is a situation where the entire country is shut down. There is total darkness in the whole country. That is what we are talking about. It happened 46 times in six years. 98 times altogether, but partial and full Greek collapses under the eight years of President Muhammad Buhari. In 2023, three times. But I'll be going deeper into all of what Nigeria has in terms of electricity assets. I'm not talking about the private sector, but as a nation. A lot has happened in the past few years as to the laws regulating power distribution, generation, and transmission. But tonight, I'm not going to be boring you with all of the jargons. What we need to take head on is the problems and what are the solutions. Here yeah, we have a former deputy governor of the Central Bank who is head in the Ministry of Power, Mr. Adelabu. Does he have a solution? I mean, it's going to be a major headache for the Tunubu government, isn't it? If you cannot sustain regular power supply, manufacturing will suffer. We cannot produ produce successfully without regular and consistent power supply. And we're looking at alternatives. Tonight, I'm being joined by a power or electricity or energy expert, Mr. Idowu Oyabanjo. He joins us live here in our Abuja. So thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sean, for yeah. having me, and uh, welcome to all our viewers. Yeah. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much indeed. You know, uh, let's get to it. And uh, I don't know, you, you may not belong to the power, <laughs> the up Nepal generation, but those of us who have not really experienced uh, the goodness of uninterrupted power supply, uh, we thought that the worst was over when those things were broken down uh, after the Nepal era passed. But what would you say, first and foremost, let's start with these power grid collapses. Would it be majorly of vandalism or what? What causes these power grid collapses? So power grid uh, collapse uh, occurs for so many reasons. And these are very complex issues, including vandalism that you have talked about. It's very important. 
to state. Because if a power tower, an electricity tower is uh, vandalized, so the electric, uh, electric uh, overhead lines come down, and then power is disrupted. So that's one major cause of uh, grid collapse, uh, vandalism. That is also the problem of generation, and also the problem of networks. So what do I mean? Essentially, a power grid will collapse if there is an imbalance between generation and consumption. So whenever you have a mismatch between what is generated and what is being consumed, then you have a grid, you have a problem with the frequency. And once the frequency wobbles below certain uh, uh, settings, then the grid will collapse because it's no longer stable. So many things can cause that. For example, if the loads are rejected, so if you have a situation of load rejection from the distribution system, then you have that. If you have a lack of supply, for example, if you have shortage of gas, like the one that happened just a few days ago. And which, by the way, is about how many percent? Almost 70 percent of our... Oh, yes. So it's quite up to 80 percent of our portfolio mm. is gas. So gas is a major issue. So, and how can we have shortage when we have gas in abundance? Yeah, production of gas is capitally, uh, is capitally intensive. You need a lot of infrastructural investment in the area of, uh, of gas for you to be able to get gas off the ground and then power them to uh, send them to the power stations, gas power stations. But you also have the problem of finance, liquidity, because if gas producers that we have uh, do not get paid back for what they have sent to the generating companies, the GENCOs, they will not continue to fund that because they will be in debt. And the generator, generation companies, the GENCOs, we also say, oh, hang on a minute, I have sent enough power to, through the transmission network and I'm not being paid back. So there is this liquidity issue that is finance is not coming back. So people are not getting paid. As a result, they shut down. We also have the problem of equipment damage. So in the case of what happened recently, after the shortage of gas, the grid wobbled, then there was a loss of one of the generating plants at Egbin this time. So the loss of a generator, generator can also cause uh, a problem for the remaining uh, system. And some of these technology are outdated also. Oh, yeah. But uh, the use of technology we, we have to do what the Renew Hope agenda has just uh, uh, made possible, right from the time of President Muhammad Buhari, the Electricity Act that was signed. This is about the only way for Nigeria to get about out of this conundrum. And which way is that? Is to fully implement the Electricity Act 2023 as amended, to decentralize the Nigerian power system. The Nigerian power grid is not massive. But for 60 years, as you have mentioned in your introduction, we have not been able to get it right. So we need to split this system and take it back to the states. States have now been empowered to generate, transmit, if necessary, distribute electricity to their citizens. This should be the most important focus of discussion in the Nigerian power sector, apart from all the other investments in the areas of metering and infrastructural development that the administration is looking at. Let's take a look at some of the facts. Maybe we can just gradually give a sense of what all of this means for Nigerians and to Nigerians. So we look at it. We have 24 gas power plants. That's what we know. Is that right? Okay. And in all of these, uh, a combined capacity of about 11,000 megawatts. Those are some of... Uh, uh, the facts and figures. Maybe uh, you can give us an insight into what all of this means. Uh, uh, that 11,000 megawatt uh, delivers just about 30% of its capacity, and we'd like to know why. Uh, the total installed capacity is about 13 G, uh, uh, gigawatt, and average available capacity is 4.5 gigawatt as of 2023. Give us a sense, and in comparison to countries like Egypt, countries like South Africa, 
our installed capacity is less than what we can what we need actually how can we gradually move forward okay thank you very much for that you are right with the figures and uh, it's uh, as a result of uh, systemic failure in the in the last many years so if you recall before privatization we were just overing about the same figure of about 3500 4000 before privatization 2013 and then Privatization was done, and technical and financial competencies were not taken on board. This is very critical for any power system to work. So let's get the first straight. If you want power in any country, you must do what they are doing in all those countries that have uninterrupted power supply. And what is this? One, meritocracy. Two, professionalism. Three, competence. Merit, merit, merit. So, so mediocrity has usually been the order of the day in, in, in contracting, in development, in installation, and in infrastructure. Is that the case? Sure. So, and when you have a system that does not celebrate merit, you will never get electricity right. So, how do you get to a point where you have 13,000 mega? Uh, uh, of uh, your megawatt, that's 13 gigawatt. Gigawatt, uh, yeah. But there is a mismatch of the capacity of the transmission. Now, there is also a mismatch. Your transmission, your record there shows that transmission can take about 7,000, 5,000 we have on record, mm -hmm. and distribution can take 3,000. So this gap, how did it happen? Some people will say, oh, we have less generation. It's true we have less lower generation compared to what we can consume. But when you have 13,000 and you are not able to consume it, generation cannot continue to ramp up. Mm. You need to bring up that transmission system to be able to come up towards 11,000 megawatt. Then the distribution to also come up to come, to come and uh, consume this electricity. That's number one. Now, why do we have a mismatch? It's because there has not been enough investment, okay? In the, in, the, in the sector. So, so let's, get, let, 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 let's, get, let's get it right so that our people who are watching tonight might, might be able to get a full understanding. So uh, these are two Apple products, right? So this looks like what we are generating. It's yeah. about 13,000. Yes. And this is what we have capacity. This is what will bring light into Nigeria. Yeah. That is the transmission, yeah. isn't it? So that's the, the mismatch we're talking about. Yes. So we have some power in some place, but unfortunately, we cannot deliver it, yeah. and that's a curse, isn't it? It is. So it's like you have a jug of water yeah. in abundance, and you have just like a cup of coffee that is a channel to funnel the light. Yeah. Is, am I right? In yes, my, you are in, right. In my basic? Absolutely. It's basic and it's clear. That's it. So what do you do? It's like a liver, a cantilever, where you have the fulcrum, and then you have the... Uh, ruler or a, a piece of wood across it. So you have the 13,000 this way and the small part 3,500 this way. So you have to start bringing them up, don't you? Yeah. So that's investment. Let me, let me allow my producer to bring me a jug of water and a cup of tea. Uh, if my producer can bring it on set. Because I'd like you to give Nigerians a sense of what the problem is. And perhaps, this is a major idea. If you were the president, I'm not sure if you can do just anything in this country without a proper power generation. So Absolutely the kind of good nothing. news, Mr. Idowu, uh, uh, is what we saw, for example, uh, in Abia State, uh, the Bath in Naji, uh, Bath and the Abia State government, and it's just about six or seven local government areas. Yeah. And there are those who will say, there are other sources or alternatives to generation and distribution of power, uh, the biomass, solar, and all what have you. Could this also be the possibility of solution to our problems? Absolutely. This will be the way to go. Every state of Nigeria, or most states of Nigeria, have resources, biomass, waste to power. We generate significant amount of waste in this country. So any state should be able to aggregate this waste. Rather than just burn them for nothing, they can use them to generate electricity. Also. You mentioned what has happened in uh, ABBA. 
That's a very classic example of what needs to be done everywhere possible in Nigeria. So independent power projects like that, where the private sector is being given the environment to be able to generate electricity, transmit, distribute it, and even give it back to the consumers, metered consumers. This will revolutionize the Nigerian power sector. And that's why I said that the decentralization of the Nigerian power sector, which has been signed into law since June 2023, needs to be fully implemented. Without this full implementation, and now when you are implementing it, you must implement it with the right kind of resources. Meritocracy must be the foremost for any state. You cannot afford to do a system that will take us back to what we experienced from 2013 to date. Experienced professionals, be it in legal aspects, accounting, commercial, but most importantly, technical. The power system is a hugely technical system, and governance structure for it must be technical. The support services are the accounting, the commercial. Look, without technical competence, you cannot have a proper power system. So, you, you, so um, which part of this would you say is perhaps the biggest? Or uh, if the cameraman can, uh, it's not this simple, though. You can bring a rule or something to slant across this. Okay. That's exactly. You should yeah. slant across now, this. Now, so the, the, let's assume that this generation. is the generation. That's the transmission. And we have, uh, le, le, yeah, so this is probably the generation. And we know that this cup cannot contain it, but this is likely to contain it. So if I pour this into this, and I still have this, yeah. Yeah. this is our major problem. It is. We have a limited capacity to transmit. Yeah. And we are, uh, we are probably generating maybe four times more than our capacity. Sure. So this is what we need to increase now. Yeah. Even the generation is even less than what we need. Absolutely. In South Africa and Egypt, what are their generation look, looking like? Well, you have thousands, 50,000 uh, megawatts for, uh, uh, for the population that is far less compared to us. But you see, in reality, you... We cannot be making such comparison, actually. Mm. It's, uh, because what drives generation capacity is the demand. So the fact that South Africa, with a far less population than Nigeria, generates 50,000 megawatts and maybe distribute them, will not be sufficient reason to say Nigeria should also do the same if we don't have the demand. So the industries have left, most industries have lived in Nigeria, because of energy costs. Manufacturing sector shutting down because uh, you have uh, problems of uh, high energy costs and they can't stay competitive if they have to manufacture in Nigeria. But what you need to do is to, like I said, implement the Electricity Act. So take an example, Abia State has done what Geometric Power Plant has done in Aba. Mm. So they've taken a franchise area where they will provide electricity. So they generate what is needed, and then they distribute it to those areas, and then they start to enjoy electricity. Many companies have now started relocating to ABA as a result. Now, if you do that everywhere in Nigeria, in, in Kaduna, in Kano, in Port Harcourt, in Lagos, Lagos, in Ogun State, that's what you are going to have. Private sector should be enabled by the state government to build capacity. But yeah. there, there is a law that says that uh, a pr private interest can generate up to one megabyte. I mean, ma one megawatt. That is what is, am I right? So this has been amended already in the Electricity Act. So the Electricity Act has made it possible to decentralize the power sector to make sure that we can use renewable systems. So solar, mini grid system, biomass that you mentioned before now, landfill gas, uh, uh, waste to power, so what is needed now is for state governments to have a, a, an enabling environment that will allow private investments such as the one we have seen in ABBA to flourish and make sure that estimated billing is outlawed, make sure that what we call protection, so there is something called protection, okay, coordination. The lack of protection coordination in Nigeria power sector is a major disaster for this country. And that's what is causing 
mm. uh, most of the grid collapse. So, I mean, uh, not to oversimplify things, uh, but for the sake of those of us who are not in your sector, so Nigeria needs maybe three times of what we are generating now to be able to meet up, yeah. and that's going to be about 13,000 times three. So you're talking about 40,000, 50,000. Yeah. So that, that, that is what we need. So about three times or, yeah. or four times of what. Yeah. So then uh, state government, uh, we don't have much a pro problem with distribution, do we? So the distribution is the last mile. And they are the ones that actually take the electricity to, to, the, consumers. to the consumers. But when distribution is having problems with their infrastructure, there's not been investment in the distribution. So system. they are still outdated, they are still old. And so this is why the state government needs to come in. This is why the law says, look, over to you, state governor. Mr. State Governor, can you please implement the Electricity Act? So which part of, in these three segments, generation, distribution, and transmission, still uh, exclusive to the, to the federal government. Which one? It's only the transmission system. It's only transmission now. that's still with it. So uh, generation and distribution can still be taken on by private sector, by the state. And the state can take ownership of those. Yeah. So it then means that in all of these, we need more generation and we need a lot of clusters of transmission. And that's it. Yeah, you are right. A lot of investment in transmission and distribution. And my recommendation is that because Nigeria is currently in the 1920s mm. of the UK and US power system. That's how outdated our, our system is. Oh, yeah, that's how far back we are. we are. What we have to do is to do exactly what they did back then, which is why I said the electricity has to be fully implemented. Go back to the states. Let the states take charge of the power supply of its citizens. Do regional grid. So, for example, in the southeast, you have the southeast regional grid. You have generation in one part of this, in all these states, and they serve the people, and the excesses are also uh, distributed among themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they have to push power to southwest, they can do so through this current transmission network. The same thing, we have power, significant hydro generation in the north. We have solar. We have wind power generation. You can, you've heard of a lot of wind, wind the farms. The sun in Kano, Meduguri, Katina, Kebi can, can fry anything without you light, lighten it. Look, you are right. Nigeria is supposed... And that is supposed to be a strong point for us. We have abundant gas. We have abundant uh, uh, sunlight. And these are natural sources of uh, power. Okay. And yet we are not able to transmit, uh, transpose that into into to productivity. Exactly. So look at the United Kingdom. Now that they are struggling with their power system a bit because of... They have gone to North Africa to get a massive portion of the desert to install solar cells just because they need the sun. And they pipe that through on the sea cable all the way from North Africa to United Kingdom. So Africa, and indeed Nigeria, that should be pioneering renewable systems, mm. use of solar, wind, and other renewable resources, we've not done that. And that's because of lack of meritocracy. The right people don't get the chance to get to the right places. And for them to be able to implement the right things. You're, you're talking Africa. about North Africa and the UK. In this country, in this Nigeria, in the Northeast, there is a private interest that, has, that is generating some form of power and taking it to neighboring African country. Private interest. Yes. using natural sunlight, solar, and transmitting it. So, Mr. Uh, you know, just for us to wrap up, so this is what we need. Some level of generation stability, isn't it? Yeah. And we need an appreciable transmission capacity that can accommodate it. Not oversimplifying, but it does look like this is what we need, isn't it? Yeah. But... Since you have 13,000 megawatt now, and you are only taking 3,000 megawatt, mm. so there is a gap of about 10,000 wasting away. What we should now do is take those 10,000 megawatt yeah. and give it to the manufacturing industries in the, na in the nation. All you need to do, get the addresses of all the manufacturing industries, put them cluster by cluster. 
take power to those people. Use mobile substations from Siemens or that we have used recently. Connect these industrial locations. Because when you power these locations, yeah. they pay a premium, mm -hmm. and you use that even to subsidize your other customers, residential customers. Suddenly, you have this we gap we will disappear. Be and we will not be experiencing this kind of... Uh, uh, it's an embarrassment. How can a whole nation be thrown into darkness when we have abundance? God has blessed us with all of those resources, but yet here we are. We throw our hands in the air as though we are helpless, but we are not. We, we need to do something, and I hope that your insight tonight will be able to help. Thank you so much, Mr. Idowu. Thank you very much. Your, your time tonight. I appreciate it.